Hi. So we're starting the uh, third method of depreciation. It's the double declining method. Um, basically, the, the main difference between double declining method and the, the other two methods we did before, the double declining method, it starts with a high amount of depreciation and it then a high amount the first year and then the following year goes a little bit lower and then lower and lower and lower year after year. Um, the units of production, it's, it might be high, low, high, low, so there's no really um, um, a pattern for that. And the straight line was just straight line. It was equal every year. So double declining starts high. And the reason why it's called double, because we start, we always multiply the, um, uh, the, uh, the, the, if we're using the straight line, we divide by the useful life. That amount, if we're using the straight line, that amount that comes out of straight line, we double it. We multiply it by two, uh, which will give us the depreciation expense for that year. Anyway, we're gonna, we, we will go back to the same example. We have a truck, it's $41,000 truck. It has a residual value of 1,000 and the useful life is five years. Um, so let's see how double declining works and how we can have higher amount the first year and then lower, 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 year after year. Um, here's, the, here's the schedule. So, okay. So 41,000 is the original value. With the straight line method and the units of production, we used to subtract the useful life here, sorry, the residual value from the original. With a double decline, and keep that in mind, we do not subtract the uh, residual value. So the 41,000, if I'm doing a straight line method, I will be multiplying by one over five, or in other words, I will be dividing 41,000 by, divided by five. But because this one is double declining, so not only that I'm gonna divide by five or multiply by one over five, I'm gonna double that. So I'm multiplying it by two. That's how you calculate your depreciation expense for year one using the double declining method. So, um, so if we go back to the schedule, Here's the year one, 41,000 multiplied by two multiplied by one over five, or in other words, multiplied by two over five. That gives me 16,400 for year one. So you can see that going back to the straight line method, we had $8,000 year one, while here it's 16,400. So it's double, it's even more than double because we did not subtract the residual value initially. Uh, so your accumulated depreciation for year one is 16400 Again, if we're talking about the journal entry to record depreciation, it's exactly the same, either double declining or units of production or straight line. Um, it's only the amount that we're calculating for depreciation. That's the one that will be different for every method. Okay, so debit depreciation expense, 16400 Credit accumulated depreciation, 16400 That's for year one. Uh, okay, so uh, your book value at the end of year one is the 41,000 minus the 16,400. That gives me 24,600 book value at the end of year one, after one year of usage. Now, going to year two, okay, so that was year one. Year two, I'm not gonna use the 41,000 anymore I am going to use the book value at the end of year one, which is the 24,600 according to the schedule, and then multiply by the one over five multiplied by two. Okay, so you will notice that you are gonna get a lower amount of depreciation for year two comparing to year one. So here, year two. 24,600 multiplied by two, multiplied by one over five, that gives me 9,840. It's way much less than the 16,400 that was last year. Um, add the 9,840 plus the accumulated depreciation from last year, 16,400, that gives me 26,240 accumulated depreciation at the end of year two, okay? Uh, 
subtract your accumulated depreciation from the book value of last year, the 24,600, that gives me 14,760. So you will see, going back to depreciation expense year after year after year, it used to be 16,400, it's lower the following year, and then lower, lower, and last year will be even lower, okay? Um, so we're gonna do the same thing, year three, four, I'm not, uh, I'm not gonna show the calculation, it's just what you have here in the schedule. You add depreciation expense to the accumulated depreciation, so for year three it becomes 32,144, uh, depreciation expense year four is 35.42 added to the 32.144 gives me 35.686. That makes your book value, or in other words, the leftover value in the truck 43.14. By the way, every time you add your accumulated depreciation plus the book value, it should take you back to the original value. Think about it. So 26,240 plus the 14,760, uh, that gives me back 41,000. Uh, same thing here, if you add those, it gives you back. Because accumulated depreciation and book value, it's what we depreciated so far, that's out, and the book value is the leftover value. So if you add them together, it gives you back the original value. Okay, now there's one more thing that we need to be careful, and that's where a lot of people do mistakes sometimes. The, so year five, um, and by the way, we, we've been dividing, we've been multiplying by one over five because it's been, it's uh, five years uh, useful life. But it could have been seven, eight, 10, 20 years. So if it was 10 years useful life, then you will divide by 10 instead of five. Anyway, going back to year five. Um, it has only five years of useful life, and remember that we need to end up with just $1,000 residual value, because that's what was given to us in this exercise. So if you do for year five, if we do um, the book value of the previous year, so 5,314 multiplied by uh, one over five, uh, multiplied by 2, that gives us 2,125.6. So if we subtract the depreciation expense, 2,125, uh, out of the 5,314, so let me do that here very quick minus 2,125.6, that will give me a book value of 3,188.4. Well, if this is the last year in our useful life, then that means we're not gonna continue depreciating after year five. So we should end up with a residual value of $1,000 at the end of year five, not 3,188.4. So, so in other words, for year five in particular, as a special case, we're going to readjust the depreciation expense for that year in particular in a way that we will end up with a book value of $1,000, not uh, 3,188.4. So the, the easiest way to calculate the depreciation expense for year five, so that we can end up with a 1,000 book value, is to do 5,314 minus 1,000, that's the residual value. So the difference between the 1,000 and the 5,314 is the portion of depreciation for year five, okay? That will give me 4,314. So that's, that's the 4,314 you see here in the schedule. It has a star next to it because it's, it was a special calculation. It was different than the previous years. So after subtract, subtracting the depreciation expense from book value of last year, that gives me a remaining of $1,000. So we need to make sure that at the end of the last year of useful life to end up with a residual value that was given to us in the exercise in the first place. Okay, so 4,314 plus the accumulated depreciation of, uh, depreciation of last year, that gives me exactly 40,000. 
that's why my remaining value is 1,000 when we subtracted 41 minus 40. Okay. Now let's let's uh, change one small thing. Um, let's change this scenario a little bit. It's Let's assume that the uh, residual value is supposed to be 3,500. So residual value 3,500 instead of 1,000. Okay. Okay. Going through the calculation step by step, year after year, up to year four is exactly the same. There's no difference. But when it comes to year five, if I'm going to do the regular calculation, that one here, to calculate depreciation expense for year five, um, then my depreciation expense for year five will be 2,125, and then my book value will be 3,188.4. But again, my book value at the end of year five should be 3,500 this time. Well, if I'm going to consider 2,125 depreciation expense, then my residual will be less than the 3,500. It will be 3,188. So again, we need to make an adjustment for year five in particular so that we will end up with 3,500 book value instead of the 3,188.4. So the quickest way to do that is going back to the book value of last year. It's, it's very similar to what we did here. So this time, instead of subtracting 1,000, this time I'm subtracting 3,500. So that will give me, uh, if I subtract that, that will give me 1,814 depreciation expense for year five. So over here, I will have 1,814. Uh, if I add that, to the accumulated depreciation of last year, uh, then I will end up with accumulated depreciation of uh, 37,500. And that will make my residual value 3,500 instead of 1,000. Okay? So in other words, sometimes year five, you need to readjust the depreciation expense. Oh, not year five, I mean the last year. It can be year five, year 10, year 20. <clears throat> so that you end up with a residual value that is exactly the same as, as what was given to you in the first place. Uh, so in the first example, we, uh, we went from 2,000 to 4,000, so we had to increase it. We had to adjust it by increasing it. In the second example, I had to go, instead of 2,000, I went to 1,800, so I had to lower it. Okay? So sometimes your adjustment is to make it higher or to make it lower depends on what residual value you want to end up with. Yep, uh, that's it for the, uh, the three methods of depreciation. In the next video, we will talk about uh, selling fixed assets.